and we are live guys welcome to another live stream from men of high value channel my name is joseph darling what we're going to talk about today is how you can embrace the bondage of semen retention if we're going to compare nofap hard mode and semen retention i would prefer semen retention nofap hard mode means that you basically well it's kind of the same thing but nofap is really that you just avoid porn and masturbation but I move it into further into actually not involving yourself with girls at all for a period of time. Simply because girls at this point in time, at this level that you're at, is a waste of time. These women will never give you long-term joy because you're gonna keep, you're gonna put, put women in your life that have more problems than you do and it's going to drag you down before you even have the chance to get your head above water. So that's why I'm thinking about doing that 90 day reboot while at the same time putting girls completely aside and just treating them as your sisters. Just for a period of time until you reboot your system past those 90 days and then after that we can talk about dating and courting and then finding the love of your life. But to be honest with you, I would take care of my empire first and get that done. If you know that, if you set in stone that bondage of not romantically interacting with women during this early phase of your transformation, you're allowing yourself time to grow and to develop. And it also gives you a massive motivation and hunger for success because you're not going to have those girls. This is a decision you make, but you're not going to have those girls before you've done some certain steps and goals. And then, you know, at that moment in time, I will have it. And that girl that I get at that time will be 10 times better than any girl that I could get within these next 90 days of my reboot process. Does that make sense? So the bondage I'm explaining right now is you, first of all, retaining your sperm, retaining your semen. That is bondage in itself. That's discipline. That's hardcore doing something that 99% of other guys are not doing. I love being part of that 1%. Don't you? I mean, it's insane. And I, I love the fact that people make fun of it and stuff like that because they have no idea the benefits that comes from it. Unless they've actually gone through more than 30 days without it, they have no idea. And that's why I love this um, this process. And it's it's insane. Like the, the benefits that comes from 90 plus days, now it's been more than 95 days for me of complete hard mode, no ejaculations, none so ever, having sex regularly with my wife the first 30 days and then the next 60 days as she's in the States, me waiting for a visa, I've had nothing and it's been great. I've enjoyed that process so much and I know you can too. So it's that discipline, that's a bondage, semen retention, but it's also a bondage to not romantically involve yourself with girls. That's a bondage. And you have to understand that it's temporary and it's it's important for you to, to have that process of time to get to the next level of success and bettering yourself and setting yourself some new higher standards of what you accept in your life. But there's another type of bondage as well and that is the bondage of having a goal. You're standing at point A right now and you want to go to point B. There is tension between those two points. There's tension. You've basically created a string. And this string or rope or whatever or cable is supposed to be pulling you towards your goal continuously. It's bondage. It's bondage, but it will get you to what you want. If you were free, that means there's no tension, there's no rope, there's no cable, there's no string, there's nothing between A and B, which means you will never get 
to be. Ever. There has to be tension. And the moment you set a hard goal and you commit 100% to achieving that hard goal, there's going to be tension, uncomfortable tension. There's going to be someone, this is your goal, pulling that rope and then pulling you towards it. This is how you have to imagine and visualize your goal. Your goal wants you. It's, it's seducing you. It's saying, come here to me. And your old self is saying, no, I don't want to. I'm so comfortable here. What are you doing? And I'm comfortable, please. You get it? But if you change your mind, your, 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 the way you think, and you start adapting the philosophies and thinking that the people who already have your goal have, then you will naturally be moving toward that process continuously until you achieve your goal. You might miss a deadline perhaps, but you're still moving towards your goal. The fact that there is a hard deadline and the fact that there is a goal, you can't really have a goal without a deadline. A hard deadline that you're saying, I'm going to achieve it at this point in time. There's bondage between point A and point B, but you got to embrace that bondage. You got to get comfortable with that bondage, that tension. The tension of no ejaculation, the tension of not romantically becoming involved with the girl that wants to become remo romantically involved. That's tension. It's good tension. And the tension of not having achieved your goal, but you having set a goal with a strong and specific deadline to achieve that specific thing. It's not some unspecified, I want to get more confidence. It's a specific thing that you can see with 2020 visualization. This is what I want. Just like I always say, if I wake you up in the middle of the night, shake you and say, what's your goal? You should be able to say it immediately. And that's the kind of bondage we want to have because you're not the person yet who is worthy of the goal that you've set. Who are some other people? that have been or that were in bondage, yet their names are etched into the history of the greats of humanity. Let's look at some names. Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, I believe it was 1907 if I remember correctly, he was prison for the first time in South Africa for basically some political things. And then he was repeatedly put in jail back in India when he tried to create the movement that would release India from British rule. He had a massive goal and his thinking managed to to bring 200 million people to agree to his vision, to his goal. It was the only way that they could achieve the goal together because the Brits had more weaponry, they had more power, they had more money, they had more everything. Yet, the Indians were 200 million people standing behind one great man who what? who deliberately created bondage in his life and embraced it with all of his passion and with all of his might. He didn't have women and sex as a priority. You know what I mean? He didn't have ejaculation as, yes, I want to ejaculate. No. He embraced a bigger purpose, a bigger goal that was massive and that was about giving people freedom and happiness from being slaves to other people. 
Another man was Nelson Mandela. Fantastic man who was imprisoned also for doing the things that he was doing in South Africa. And at one point, he was imprisoned for 20 flippin' years for his struggle and trying to achieve his goal, which was that there would be equal rights among the whites and the blacks in South Africa. Now, his vision was clear. He, it hasn't been achieved completely yet, but the circumstances in South Africa are way better than they were at the time when Nelson Mandela was alive, or at the time that he was active in pursuing his goal. Again, you have to embrace your bondage the same way that these men embraced their bondage. I've actually been to Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela was in prison for 20 years. It was amazing to see. And then watching the movie of Nelson Mandela being in prison, and, and them using the sets. I actually believe that they use the same sets because it looked completely alike. And, and just seeing that is amazing. You have to compare yourself to the greats. You have to look at them and see, man, I want to do something like that. But in terms of your goals, right? They had something huge. They, they were thinking millions of people are, gonna, are going to have a better life because of me, because of what I did and because of the struggle that I did. These were good men, masculine men, who set aside their own priorities in order to help others. And because of that, their names are legends and etched into history and to all humankind. Another one was Martin Luther King. I could go on and on, but he was imprisoned at least 30 times in his lifetime. Embrace the bondage. Another man was Viktor Frankl, who was a, a Jewish um, prisoner in the concentration camps during World War II. He wrote the book, A Man's Search for, uh, for Meaning. Now, he was... The things that he's accomplished with that book... And there's just helping people to understand that having purpose, no matter in what circumstance you are in, the suffering will be worth it if you've got a specific purpose in mind. Again, for you, what's your goal? Do you have purpose? Do you have a purpose that's bigger than you? That's, that's huge. It's going to take some time to set that system in place. And this is why we're starting with semen retention for 90 days. If you're busy with masturbating and watching porn, you're not going to take the necessary steps to think big about your life. You're going to th think small and think, oh, uh, well, I don't know if I can do anything with my life. I'm struggling with porn and, and, and masturbation addiction and, and drugs and alcohol and whatever it is out there. Get rid of it, man. You're in like small bondage territory. That sucks. You will be forgotten if you stay there. But you will be remembered by thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions in the future if you think big. And for a short period of time, you deprioritize women and you completely stop the porn and masturbation until you're ready to create massive momentum and achieve your goals. And the last one I want to mention is Joseph in Egypt. It's a biblical story, but hey, he was an amazing guy. Sold as a slave as a 17-year-old and built himself up to when he was maybe 26, 27, and then that the woman basically wanted him to have sex with her and he said no. And then she blamed him and said that she he had raped her and then he was put in prison. And he was there for years. We know at least it was two years. He embraced the bondage. And I can promise you he was practicing semen retention during that time. 
and he went on to be to solve Pharaoh's problem and eventually became the overseer of all of Egypt and became basically Pharaoh's right hand and created massive success for his life. Do you understand? You can do that too. You can create massive success. But it starts with semen retention, rebooting your system for 90 days, clearing that, and then taking the next step towards your future. That will make you more masculine, develop more confidence, and create everything that you want out of life. This is the Men of High Value channel. Make sure you like this video, and I will see you again tomorrow.